Ladies and gentlemen, here to the 44 variant tournament for November 9th. Of course, you do see at the top that we do have the uh, the game currently taking place. Uh, we've been trying to work on a fix so far tonight to try and see if we can get things kind of ironed out regarding the Concaster, but it seems that for Hardpoint, uh, we're kind of stuck in this particular menu, despite all the fixes that we have been trying to complete or the uh, obvious changes to kind of put it in the first person. For whatever reason, it's just not happening tonight. So we do apologize for that being the case. Of course, for future, we'll make sure that the uh, hardpoint matches are streamable and that they are, of course, up to date. But until then, we can kind of obviously bring you uh, Search and Destroy and either CTF or Gridiron in the first person. But hardpoint is going to have to stay from above. So uh, it looks like I feel like I'm casting League of Legends right now. But regardless, looking on here as it will be the side of Rocket Esports facing off against Zodiac. Of course, this is our first semi-final for the night. I believe the other one currently going on as well. But uh, both these teams, we've been able to witness take their opposite series. Of course, Rocket Esports just finished off beating the side of BTGRN as they won that one in map three on the Gridiron Flak Tower. And then, of course, in the series prior, we had Zodiac going up against Raps Rebellion, in which case they won that one at two to zero. Uh, along with the fact of winning their first hardpoint game, 250 to 249. So with that, looking on, of course, we're looking at hardpoint here on Arden Forest. As uh, something's going to keep in mind, I'm going to kind of talk about the map quite a bit because I can't really see what the players are exactly doing. Uh, one thing to kind of bring up with this map is that when it comes down to sides, the side that currently, I believe, Rocket Esports is on, which is obviously the blue side, currently aka the allies is the preferred side to be on kind of holding this back bunker setup is absolutely huge granted you don't have as much cover as the other team does or the other side does when it comes into being on cabin side but it offers you a easy and nice rotation that you're going to be able to have when it comes down to overall on ruins so with that something to kind of keep in mind this is one thing that the side of zodiac is going to have to be aware of is making that rotation back being aware of that push that can come through ruins but it seems that the side of Rocket Esports is pushing this one out through cabin. They're going to go ahead and let the last few seconds be given toward Nelson as they're going to be on a full flank here toward the back lines as it will be TCM and Twiz both falling. Looking at damage perspective at the moment, getting a peek just for a second as the Molotov goes out to try and limit him for as long as they can as they'll now be reset. And they're going to have to re-challenge this one over in Ruins, and Ruins is a hard, hard point to take, especially if we're coming from that long bridge side over on Cabins. As it will be Demi, picking up one there instead of Ruins, doing some damage actually, the two versus one engagement as Nox will fall, and it looks like a retake situation coming in from Rocket, as they're now going to try and establish as much of a lead as they can. Of course, Double Molly's out along with a Nade. Nice combination there coming in as the uh, most likely communication as well, coming forward the Double Molly toward the back lines, along with the fact that the Nade just the icing on the cake. As Nelson finds a huge 1v1 versus Baker, that's going to give him the last 11 seconds of Ruins Hardpoint. As we'll now be rotating here back toward Bunker. And this is the reason why I said it's a very strong position to kind of hold toward backside Bunker. Is really just the overall fact that you have at least three Hardpoints that are going to either be even or totally be on your side. So why not try to hold this back bunker area, especially when they can only either come through mid-map, they can either come through a pretty sketchy side when it comes down to ruins from second hill, or they can try to come through the long range of death, really the uh, kind of no man's land here through forest. It's not an easy position to try and take. However, Jump is trying to make that happen as he'll both, as he actually, actually drops. Twiz and Baker both finding double kills. As Nelson entering in, he'll also fall to Baker. And so as these gun engagements begin to follow through, you see the constant dolphin dives coming through here for Zodiac, just trying to stay alive for as long as possible, trying to delay all the time that we're currently seeing Rocket Esports start to pick up. As one will come through the backside, a final break here. However, you see the pinch and the overall spawn still coming in here for the set of Rocket Esports as Demi going to ignore the last few seconds set up here for the last tail, which is going to be on a road. And until nades are nerfed, really, We'll be seeing a contest fest hard point when it comes down to this. I believe off of rotation from either side, within about two or three seconds, you can see a nade being flown in from either opportunity, whether it comes through back bunker or through back cabin. You're going to see quite a few mollies, quite a few nades, stuns, everything that you can really throw. So until the nades are kind of tampered with, I think it's fair to say, we're going to be seeing quite a few of those tacticals and lethals being tossed throughout the map and even on each other. As Nelson ends up finding one on TCM, that's rather unfortunate. Nelson saying that I would really prefer the objective time, rather. 
as he's already racked up over two minutes in the side of that hard point. But looking on, as you see the nades start to be graced down. Twiz and TCM doing a great job at holding this one on is most likely unless Zodiac can get a solid rotation back here toward Cave. Things are looking a little bit awkward early as they already have a 100 point established lead. And looking on, Zodiac has got to do something different. They've got to change things up. They have made their rotation, so they're doing well when it comes down to Cave. Needs coming through with Demi. Twiz responding for three as this hill totally gets broken wide open. As here comes Zodiac trying to prevent what could be an early map one loss. Trying to limit the side of Rocket as much as possible. And Nelson still locking down free time in the hard point. This is the one thing and one advantage about being in the driver's seat is that you can afford to do stuff like that. You don't have to go for the engagements. He realizes the seconds are more important, doesn't try to engage, and he grabs, what, maybe four or five seconds, but when it comes down to being so close to 250, why not try and make something like that happen? As I believe off this hill, they can actually win this one. As he just hops out, he no longer can. Of course, the nade along with that one coming through from Zach. It's still up in the air as far as the overall result that could take place. However, it seems that this one will go the way of Rocket Esports. Molotov's out for sure. Nades as well as a nice little one. We'll hop onto the hard point, but still staying alive right now is Nelson. And this one will come to a close. Of course, an interesting hard point to say the least from our point of view. As this one will be closed out 252. As Demi find a nice responding kill there on to Knox. As this one will be done and dusted with, of course, Rocket Esports taking yet again another respawn as they win this one 250 to 128. Back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 4v4 variant tournament for November 9th. We're loading here toward Search and Destroy on London Docks between Rocket Esports and Zodiac, of course. We have to take a uh, overhead perspective at the uh, last hard point. Of course, as it was a 250 to 128 win there for the side of Rocket. As we're now focusing our attention towards some search and destroy one life per round and a bomb that needs to be planted or defused. It seems that it will be Jump and Co. from the side of Zodiac trying to get that one down shortly. And it will be Twiz last alive, seeing at least two players, but only for a brief second before being dropped. And it will be a round win there for Zodiac. And more importantly, also getting the bomb down as well. So that's going to be pretty important when it comes down to score. As well as uh, leading in there toward those score streaks. As it will be a major positive winning an offensive round. Especially when it comes down to London Docks. Looking on though. As we're going to hop on board here with a great Twizzini. The man who couldn't get it done necessarily in that last round, but who could when you're in a one versus three. The guy played incredibly strong when it came down to our prior series respawn on Hardpoint, actually, on this exact same map. So looking to see what he can do when it comes down to S&D. Of course, being aware of that push and just happens to be aware after playing the game for quite a bit of time. Of course, it has only been a few days, but I'm sure Twiz has been grinding, knew exactly the positioning of where a player would have been, just happens to be that Baker was roaming there. Nelson gets dropped while being crouched and jumped at the same time, shuts down TCM. An immediate two versus four. Twist position is known, and while Demi does shut down jump with a headshot, a one versus three. Well, shut down Godlike as well, so I was getting ready to say, not a whole lot of positives, but when you're hitting shots like that, things can definitely be turned around. And Demi, looking to try to play this as smart as possible, does not want to reveal his position with the bomb plant, but at the same time might just have to. As he spots Baker through mid map. Now a one versus one, and Knox firing through the backside. That could have been a one versus four. However, Knox is there to help silence it. As the crucial round, overall momentum, forward to the side of Rocket Esports. Unfortunately, will blast off him to nowhere, as Zodiac will be able to be there for the ending kill. So with that, two early rounds awarded towards Zodiac. And like I said, in a prior series, we end up seeing the set of Rocket Esports actually lose a search and destroy. They end up losing that one to BTGRN, which was uh, Brilliant, Stump, Viatura, and Brolic. They lost that one, I believe, on St. Marie Dumont. So got to keep in mind, at least so far, search and destroy, not their strongest game mode 
as of yet. It seems to kind of dominate when it comes down to the slaying game types. Of course, gridiron, CTF, and these hard points. But uh, Dallas looking on, jump and co on offense. Early rushes. Nelson is able to make that one work. Takes that to Baker and jump at the same time. As we'll now find ourselves in a one versus one. Zach Godlike versus Twizini. As Bomb is down here for Zach, not going to be anywhere near that one. We're trying to go for the flank, and Twiz might just be fully aware that this is happening. This is a great line sight, great intuition for Twiz to hold this angle. However, Zach Godlike going to check this position, and yes, he does. I talk about intuition from the vet. Zach is here to spot the gun barrel. That's the one problem maybe with using the bar is just how far it sticks out. A huge win there for Zach. As it's now going to be three rounds in a row for the side of Zodiac. And along with it, four and one. Now for Zach Godlike, along with Knox currently sitting at five and one. Knox feeling pretty well, feeling pretty good right now. Car 98K in hand and just nearly peaks at the worst time possible. Could have saw Nelson, but at least knows that one player is here in Twiz. And he's going to let his teammate know jump. That's taking play. Spots one does jump. Taking out Twiz. Pulls up the pistol for the second one. Making it look easy. As for a moment, it was a two versus four. Then he goes for the dolphin dive just to let TCM know that he's still afloat. But only for a short time. As Zach Godlike drowning the side of Rocket Esports at the moment. As it will be a one versus three here for T. He will fall inside of Winery. It's four to zero. Knox, yet again here in the final kill cam. Zodiac have just come to play when it comes into S&D. I'm sure they would probably prefer these be, to be best of fives at this point, just because they wish they could have that map five potential. But if we do see the side of Zodiac win two more rounds, we are headed to CTF on St. Marie. So I'm going to be keeping out for as uh, Jump, actually. Pulling up the, the pistol off the start there. Film, maybe, I don't know, maybe he knows something I don't with the machine pistol. Maybe it's better at range than the uh, bar. Who knows? We're looking on a, uh, what seemed to be an A push has now turned into a B rotation. That's how easy it is when it comes into London Docks. As Twiz is here, shuts down Knox. Only player currently in a position to stop this bomb plant from going down. Spots the head of two players. And a TCM is trying prevent this one from happening. Going up on that box could combine for a nice jump shot. Baker just around the corner. And player number eight, Nelson actually sitting just inside a barrel building, but he ends up falling. He tries to go for the flank, but it doesn't work out. At the same time, TCM also falls. So it seemed like great positioning for both TCM and Nelson, especially in a situation where they were in the overall advantage. They lose it in a matter of moments. And now a one versus two. Demi back against the wall. And Baker getting this bomb down here. Demi's not going to be able to stop this bomb plant from going down. But how does the retake go through? This is such a narrow corridor to enter. He's going to have to find a pick and then try to outmaneuver the other Zodiac player. So Demi choosing his sight. I like the positioning, actually, for both these players. One on the outside, just one on the Corridor toward docks. Zach Godlike will toss the Maltov in, and Demi feeling the flames as he'll not last much longer, burning into a crisp. As it will be five rounds to zero. And the shot, I believe. Oh my goodness! The shot through the bottom of the dock there from Zach. That's a nice little line sight that I did not know of. So make sure to write that one down, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to put that one down in your notes. We're learning stuff today. We're learning things today. And Zodiac taking Rocket Esports to school. Baker tossing out a nade. Knox, the early snipe. The Car 98K treating him well. As the flames will burn yet again for Demi. He thought he could escape from them. But they were just waiting right around the corner. TCM, Twiz, last alive. The last two to try and at least see a round at number seven. And it's just things are not going their way. Something about this map, something about this game mode is just not working for them as the hot 6-0 comes through along with the snipe at the end. Knox, the car 98K, the beautiful sniper shot. 
will seal the deal. As we were talking about momentum heading in toward a mat number two, well, things are definitely reversed now. Zodiac got to feel on top of the world after winning that last search and destroy and not dropping a single round. Eight and two there for Knox. Is that godlike seven and one? Thanks everyone, of course, to the 4v4 variants here for November 9th. We're heading in here toward map number three. It will be CTF on St. Marie de Mont. As we're looking on here with Rocket Esports and Zodiac. Looking here through the eyes of TCM. Of course, we're looking forward to witness some search for some easy. Catch the flag. As I haven't actually been able to cast over this game mode as of yet so far in World War II. Got to cast Hardpoint, Gridiron. Now I get to capture some old Capture the Flag. Of course, very nice to witness. One of my favorite game modes back in the day on some boots on the ground action. As, of course, we are looking on here to kind of break things down for you guys. Looking forward toward this map three. It was Rocket Esports who took map number one on Arden Forest. 250 to 128. And, of course, the search and destroy that we just witnessed was a hot 6-0 coming in from Zodiac. And the reason why I bring up the uh, series this early on and the overall scoreline is just because where does the momentum fall? Do we talk about the early respawn pressure that we, have, of course, end up seeing from Rocket Esports? They win all their hard points, and especially this last one, in a pretty dominant way. Or do we look at that last search and destroy performance? Do we say, well, hey, maybe it's just the overall it was a slow first map. Maybe it was just the fact that Things weren't going the way as far as gunfights are considered. Maybe it was just a slow game. So, question being, where's the momentum fall? Who's it with? As it seems that player number five, Twizini, will grab the return. As the flag was out just only for a moment there from the side of Zodiac. So, with that, of course, both teams revealing positions. Also showing the fact that they are willing to play aggressive off the start as Knox will grab two. Not allowing TCM and Demi to grab... That flag only for a short time, so as the side of Rocket Esports will reset, Nelson, the top line, will also fall. So map positioning is going to be very important. I think, honestly, top restaurant doesn't play as much of a factor as it does when it comes in a hard point, and especially search and destroy. However, definitely a major power position to hold at certain moments during a capture the flag game. Three, fall, four, actually drop for a time. So this is the opportunity here. Zach Godlike going to be tossing out there that stun, trying to delay the players from Rocket Esports off spawn. He's going to have some pressure. He's got jump leaning through mid-map. He's got one at top rush drop, but someone has to grab this flag. Someone's going to stop it now if you are the set of Rocket Esports. But no, the Maltop comes out, and Demi is there just narrowly for the return. Finds a kill on Knox to go on top with it, and he'll find one on Baker as well. A huge stoppage there coming in from Demi. Eight and three, and nearly... Goes on for his ninth as TCM being aware inside of the base. Shuts down two as Twizini finds the third. So it seemed like a push that could happen as now the roles are reversed. TCM not trying to rush forward. He's got the flag in his back pocket. And we'll see how far he can make it with this one. Is on the opposite end here. We're going to head to the sky cam. We've been on this one quite a bit. But now it's actually necessary to coming through that B-bomb site. As now TCM could make this one through. Players coming through B-bomb, a.k.a. Radio Tower. As the first flag will go through, a fighter pilot earned here for TCM, as that is big. Not the easiest of runs, but one that goes through regardless there for the side of Rocket Esports. As now they can play the waiting game. They can kind of play back in their base. As Baker going for the dives, the splash gives it away to Demi. And that's when he should win every day of the week. Demi can only sit in a 10 and 4, now 10 and 5. As they'll drop into that top restaurant. Playing incredibly strong. It was a major reason why we ended up seeing one push get totally delayed. As TCM on this four spree has now earned full, full streaks. He's got the Molotov, the fighter pilot, along with the glide bomb. He's going to be feeling pretty good. So if you are honestly on the side of Rocket Esports, you're up, obviously. After four minutes of play in this round one, you've got streaks to work with. There's no reason why they can't play passively, let the players of Zodiac come to them, and then once they can get maybe a two or three down, they can kind of move forward. So, kind of a guerrilla style of warfare as TCM at the worst time possible. We'll call him that glide bomb. And he's not going to find any kills with it. So, kind of a waste of streak. However, players coming in through winery, as that's a big one for Zach. He'll find two to Azini. Wraps back around, realizes the flag has been grabbed, but a fast shutdown. 
as Twiz will also find the return. As with 20 seconds left, you'd like to imagine that there is not going to be any more flags captured. Is that guy like trying to do some damage when it comes down to his overall score streak? So at the half, after the, at the last eight seconds, will tick down. It will be a one to zero advantage here toward the side of Rocket Esports. And uh, taking a look at that scorecard, of course, you see Twizini ten and six, still playing strong. This has been one guy that I've been really wanting to highlight throughout this series because I've been, of course, following Twiz for a very long time throughout his competitive career, kind of most notably since Advanced Warfare. And I know he's been waiting for a boots in the grand title for a very long time. He's kind of found his struggles at moments. And uh, has also found some high strides as well during certain moments. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him when it comes into the rest of World War II. It's been great to kind of catch him and his squad playing. And of course, like I said, sitting at 10 and 6, but just above him, Demi, 11 and 7. This guy probably, like I said, coming into their first series actually of the night. Kind of probably, and most likely to the competitive Call of Duty esports scene, one of the more underrated or underknown players. Played for uh, DT Purple, actually, most notably back during the uh, relegation for, I believe, either Season 2 or Season 3 of the MLG Pro League back in AW. As he actually played alongside a Baker, so kind of funny enough, these two facing off against each other. Just a few years later, of course, going from the skies now back to being on the ground. As it is Nelson for the side of Rocket Esports, finds the flank, also gets a kill with it inside a winery, making himself... Parents, as Baker will be there for the pickup. As Jump has the flag in hand, this should be a cap actually be awarded toward the side of Zodiac. So the response comes in, and after just really a minute expiring from this second half, they've already got one responding. And Knox as well could be here for the return. The side of Zodiac could make this one a one point advantage in their favor. The side of Rocket Esports isn't aware that the push is constantly taking place, and Nelson tries to go for the challenge. Not going to happen. Nox is here. Nox has also earned full streaks at the exact same time. If you're Rocket Esports, you can't afford to be losing things like this. So TCM takes full control over the opposite team's base. Waltzing his way in toward Zodiac's home. And grabbing that flag and trying to escape. As Nox will find cover. And this is what we see at times when it comes into CTFA stalemate. It's really about how much pressure are you going to award toward the offensive line? How much pressure do you award toward trying to get that flag? As a big kill there comes in from jump. That's going to limit to Azini, and now they're aware. Flag here is either alone or he's got at least one more player with him. And here comes the big kill. Jump finds one, but no, the return does not come in. Nelson, just in the nick of time, is there for the stoppage. Can he stay alive through this streak? Yes, he does stay alive. Twiz will fall, however, a narrow return that could have came in there from Zodiac. Nearly stopped in the last second there from Nelson. So, of course, on opposite ends, we've got Knox for Zodiac on one end. Nelson for the set of Rocket Esports on the other. As they're going to have to rely on their teammates to get a stop pitch forward, they're going to need some sneaky play to take place. And Jump does exactly what he needs to, shutting down Twiz. At the same time, Zach shuts down the other. And now Nelson, left in a pretty awkward scenario, trying to make his way toward his teammate. Twizini, Twiz, help me, says Nelson. Twiz finds one, and so things are going to be a little bit easier, but only for the moment. Zach got like his here. Zach needs to find the kill. He's rocks out the Molotai, but thankfully the assist is there from Demi. Somehow Rocket Esports is staying alive. And most notably, Nelson, the man with the flag in his hands. I believe also does have a smoke, so if he maybe wanted to use a smoke to try and stay alive, that'd be possible. But he is in a pretty awkward spot because player number four is Knox. And he has an idea of where Nelson could be. Has a Molotov and knows a current position of where he is near. Can he find the kills? The question, yes, finds that. And Baker should be good for the return. Is anyone here to stop this one from happening? Demi is, but not in the nick of time. As the sneak plays will work out for Zodiac as they take a 2-1 to -one advantage. Now in this capture the flag game. Demi falls. Baker finding one in the base as Knox now grabbing this one. And you've got to imagine if they could find this. Flag yet again, this should be the nail of the coffin. Player number five firing from restaurant, that is Twiz. And just trying to stay alive right now is Knox. Goes for the dolphin dive, but can't escape the kill coming in from TCM. And the dolphin dive to make sure that this one is not much more out of their hands. 
as they've got 50 seconds left to make a push. What can Rocket Esports do? Zach Godlike in the backside doing the damage. However, player number five, Twiz, doing his best to try and at least force his way forward, trying to get toward the back of the base, but still not happening for them. It's just not happening for Rocket Esports. They're not having the success. The sneak plays work out for Zodiac, and now they have the advantage. 20 seconds remaining. TCM has to make a play, even though he's by himself. Finds one, goes for the pre-fire, and can't find anything. Streaks would most likely stop any last-second push that Twiz could make. And he's only got 12 seconds left and playing passively. It's not going to matter. But still, could grab the flag. I forgot, actually. If you do grab the flag with just a few seconds remaining, it does give you a one-minute grace period. So maybe if Demi can get on it, if Nelson can get on it either, it could have worked out for them. But no, not going to take place. As this one will be locked down, as we will be seeing Zodiac move on toward our final. As it was a valiant effort, of course, between both of these teams. But in the end, this is the side of Zodiac who gets the momentum from map number two on London Docks. They win that win 6-0 to zero after losing map number one in a pretty dominant way on Arden Forest. And honestly, you really have to imagine. In Search and Destroy, we talk about momentum when it comes in a series. There is somewhat of a, of, of a momentum for sure because... Whenever you're obviously losing a current respawn, the thing is, you know, you got to have that kind of quick turnaround. You have to have that kind of short-term memory loss if you're a Call of Duty competitive player. So if you're in Zodiac's position and playing down like they were, to win that search and destroy in such a dominant way has got to be huge for your overall morale. So kind of thinking on heading into the CTF, one that kind of combines the slaying and the, you know, kind of rotating the hard point does along with the teamwork that Search and Destroy requires, along with the Clutch Gunfight. So CTF kind of combining both Hardpoint and Search and Destroy, at least in this series, Zodiac seeming like they are the more complete team as of right now. However, if we were to see, you know, if, if we were to see a um, Gridiron, uh, of course, game mode, could that have totally changed the series? It absolutely could have. So it kind of just depends on what we're going to be seeing as time does go on once the competitive game mode has been chosen. However, for now, we will be waving goodbye toward Demi, Nelson, Twiz, and TCM of Rocket Esports and saying, Zodiac, welcome to the finals as they will progress here. Toward